Hello. Today we're going to talk about the methodology known as communicative language teaching. I want to look at its evolution since it uh, was first developed in the 1970s and look at how it's influenced approaches to language teaching today. You know, in my experience, many language teachers, when you ask them to identify what methodology they use, they often mention communicative as the methodology of choice. However, when uh, pressed to give a more detailed account of what they mean by communicative, their explanations tend to vary. Does this mean teaching conversation? Does it mean an absence of grammar in a course? Or perhaps an emphasis on open-ended discussion activities as the main features of a course? So perhaps I could ask you, what do you understand by communicative language teaching? Communicative language teaching can be understood as a set of principles, first of all, about the goals of language teaching, uh, assumptions about how learners learn a language, the kinds of classroom activities that best facilitate learning, and the roles of teachers and learners in the classroom. So I'd like to examine each of these issues, perhaps in a little more detail. Communicative language teaching sets as its goal the teaching of what is called communicative competence. Communicative competence can be contrasted with linguistic or grammatical competence, which really focuses on sentence formation and the ability to produce grammatically correct sentences. Linguistic competence does not really describe how we use language as a basis for communication. This is the focus of communicative competence. And communicative competence includes a number of different dimensions of language knowledge and use. For example, knowing how to use a language for a range of different purposes and functions. Uh, knowing how to vary our use of language according to the setting, who we're talking to, and whether a formal and informal or informal speech style is appropriate. It also refers to how we can use language as a medium for cross-cultural communication, uh, interacting with people from different cultural backgrounds. It includes knowing how to produce different uh, types of texts, such as narratives, reports, interviews, or conversations. It also includes how, can we, how we maintain communication despite having limitations in one's language proficiency through perhaps using different kinds of communication strategies. Communicative language teaching also reflects an understanding of what the processes of second language learning consist of. And uh, these processes include things such as the following, um, interaction between the learner and the users of the language, uh, collaborative creation of meaning, um, creating meaningful and purposeful interaction through language. Uh, it includes uh, learning through negotiation of meaning as the learner and the interlocutor arrive at understanding. It includes learning through paying attention to the feedback learners get when they use the language. It also includes noticing, paying attention to the language one hears and trying to incorporate new forms into one's developing communicative competence. And it also includes the ability to try out and experiment with different ways of saying things. Now when CLT began uh, there was a movement away from traditional lesson formats where the focus was on mastery of different items of grammar and practice through controls activities such as memorization of dialogues, drills, and the use of... Uh, in, in CLT, this moved towards the use of pair work activities, role plays, group work activities, and project work. So a movement away from accuracy-based activities, if you like, towards more fluency, communicative-based activities. The type of classroom activities proposed then also implied new roles in the classroom for teachers and learners. Learners now had to participate in classroom activities that were based on a cooperative rather than an individualistic approach to learning. They had to become comfortable with listening to their peers in group work or pair work tasks rather than relying solely on the teacher for a model. They were expected to take on a greater degree of responsibility for their own learning. And uh, teachers now had to assume the role of facilitator and monitor, rather than being a model for correct speech and writing, and one with the primary responsibility of making students avoid errors, the, the teacher had to develop a different view of learners' errors and of his or her own role in 
facilitating language learning. So, under the influence of CLT theory, grammar-based methodologies such as uh, audiolingualism gave way to more functional and skill-based teaching. And, at the same time, accuracy activities such as drilling were replaced by uh, activities based on uh, interactive small group work. As you can imagine, communicative language teaching created a great deal of enthusiasm and excitement when it first appeared as a new approach to language teaching in the 1970s and 80s. And language teachers and teaching institutions all around the world soon began to rethink their, their teaching, their syllabuses, their classroom materials. And in planning language courses within a communicative approach, grammar was no longer the starting point. New approaches to language teaching and language course development were needed. The um, communicative approach prompted then a rethinking of classroom teaching methodology. It was argued that learners learn a language through the process of communication in it, and that communication that's meaningful to the learner provides a better opportunity for learning than through a grammar-based approach. New techniques were needed, as I mentioned, new roles for teachers, new roles for the learner. So instead of focusing on accurate repetition and memorization of sentences and grammatical patterns, activities that required learners to negotiate meaning and to interact meaningfully were required. Since the 1990s, the communicative approach has been widely implemented, but because it describes a set of very general principles grounded in the notion of communicative competence as the goal of second and foreign language teaching and learning, and as well as the use of a communicative syllabus and methodology, because of these general goals, it's continued to evolve as our understanding of the processes of second language learning has developed. Current communicative language teaching theory and practice thus draws on a number of different educational paradigms and traditions. And since it draws on a number of diverse sources, there is no single or agreed upon set of practices that characterize current communicative approaches. Rather, CLT today refers to a set of generally agreed upon principles that can be applied in different ways depending on the teaching context, the age of the learners, their level, their learning goals, and so on. So current approaches to methodology draw on earlier traditions in CLT and continue to make reference to some extent to traditional approaches as well. So classroom activities typically have some of these characteristics. They seek to develop students' communicative competence through linking grammatical development to the ability to communicate. So grammar is not taught in isolation, but often arises out of a communicative task, thus creating a need for specific items of grammar. Students might carry out a task and then reflect on some of the linguistic characteristics of their performance. In the classroom, the activities for the requiring the communication, interaction and negotiation of meaning are made use of. These include problem-solving activities, information sharing, role-play, and task-based activities. And these provide opportunities for both inductive as well as a deductive learning of grammar. Activities also seek to employ content that connects to students' lives and interests. They also allow students to personalize learning by applying what they've learned to their own lives. And classroom materials typically most use of make use of authentic texts, authentic sources to create interest and to provide valid models of language. Here the internet is providing a great deal of uh, source for language teaching materials. Different syllabus types within a communicative orientation to language teaching employ different routes to developing communicative competence. Since its inception in the 1970s, CLT has passed through a number of different phases in the first phase, a primary concern was the need to develop a syllabus and teaching approach that was compatible with early conceptions of communicative competence. As I said earlier, this led to proposals for the organization of syllabuses in terms of functions and notions, rather than simply in terms of grammatical structures. Later, the focus shifted to procedures for identifying learners' communicative needs, and this resulted in proposals to make needs analysis an essential, communicative, uh, an essential component of communicative methodology. At the same time, as I noticed, methodologists focused on the kinds of classroom activities that could be used to implement a communicative approach, such as group work, task work, and information gap activities. 
So today, CLT can be seen as describing a set of core principles about language teaching and learning which can be applied in different ways and which address different aspects of the processes of teaching and learning.